I really got to know Kenneth last year. We were in the same physical class with Mr. Muhammad. Kenneth is a pretty quiet and simple man, but when it comes to group me, he is anything but. <laughs> if any of you ever need anything printed in 3D, Kenny is the one to talk to. So here's the man that can fall asleep anywhere, Kenneth Chow. <laughs> friendship, and family. They have been with me in times of joy and sadness. They are with me in times of self-doubt and wrongs low. And they are able to always lift my spirits whenever I'm in their presence. When I moved here from Greenville back in 2012, I had a hard time talking to people. I had just moved away from my hometown, and I had to leave behind friends who I had known for my whole life. I was angry and upset that I couldn't spend any more time with them. So I kind of refused to fit in here in hopes that my parents would realize that I was miserable here and that I wanted to go back home. For this reason, I was that weird guy in eighth grade who sat in by himself at lunch and said strange things to people. After realizing that I was not going back to Greenville, I started to make a transition to fit in here at hand. I started talking more to classmates and made some very good friends here. All throughout this process, that special group of people were with me every single step of the way. Whenever I saw them, I was able to put away my troubles for a while and truly enjoy myself. I really owe my thanks to these people for they made me who I am today. Now, I don't really, I don't really remember that day when I was first introduced to them, but I think I have an idea of how it went. It began with just 10 words. A long time ago, the galaxy far, far away. <laughs> it's a period of civil war. Rebel starships striking from a hidden base have won their first victory against the evil galactic empire. During the battle, rebel spies managed to steal secret plans to the empire's ultimate weapon, the Death Star, an armored space station with enough power to destroy an entire planet. <laughs> Pursued by the Empire's sinister agents, Princess Leia races home aboard a starship, custodian of the stolen plans that can save her people and restore freedom to the galaxy. That group of people I met so long ago were Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia Organa, Han Solo, Chewbacca, R2D2, C3PO, and many more characters. Released on May 25th, 1977, Star Wars, later retitled as Star Wars Episode 4. New Hope, after they made one movies, took the world by surprise. Even the cast and director himself, George Lucas, didn't think that the now pop culture phenomenon would succeed. But defying all odds, Star Wars and New Hope became a critical success and spawned a beloved franchise that has made a lasting mark on modern culture and on me. As you may have guessed, I am very, very passionate about this epic space opera. <laughs> Ever since my first viewing so long ago, I've just fallen in love with the setting, the characters, the story, and the music. Growing up, I immersed myself in Star Wars. I traveled the galaxy by reading books, recreated scenes with Lego toys and video games, and created new stories with my friends during recess. However, there came a dark time in my life when I had to move away from my hometown, and even worse, my childhood. I forgot all about Star Wars because I thought I'd grown out of it and because it seemed that no one here shares, shared the same interest as me. However, later in the same year I moved to our new home, I rediscovered Star Wars after a great disturbance in the Force. <laughs> the great Disney acquisition of 2012. <laughs> Up until this point, there had not been a Star Wars movie in seven years, and it seemed that all was lost for, lost for the franchise. But Disney released a new wave for the new canon. There were new books, comics, and a TV show. The dry spell had been lifted, and I devoured all this new Star Wars material with glee. Star Wars had begun its return. During this time, I heard the rumors 
of a new Star Wars movie on the horizon. These rumors told of new adventures involving the old cast and a brand new one with fresh faces. When the trailers finally hit the internet in 2014, I couldn't have stopped replaying them over and over. After a long year of waiting, I was finally in the theater watching Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. I'm not gonna lie, I trade up a little bit when that theme music came on. <laughs> While watching that movie, I felt I was a little kid again. It hit all the right things for it hit all the right things for me. Great characters, a sense of adventure, and it just felt like a Star Wars movie. And it was right there on the big screen. I felt the same excitement again for Rogue One, a Star Wars story. And I'm sure I'll feel that magic again for the upcoming Star Wars, Episode 8, The Last Jedi. I could spend hours just talking about Star Wars in general, but due to the fact I had to cut my speech down three times, <laughs> I'll tell you all about three scenes that are significant to me. Number one, the binary sunset in Episode 4, of New Hope. That shot where Luke looks down to the looks out to the twin setting suns combined with John Williams music always gets to me every time I see the movie. I see a little bit of me in him looking out to the future, not knowing what will happen. But what he doesn't know is that he's destined for great things, and hopefully I am as well. The duel on Cloud City in uh, episode five, The Empire Strikes Back. In that unforgettable lightsaber duel, Luke finally confronts the dark side by himself head on. Not only is he facing Darth Vader, but he's also facing his own weaknesses and fears. Although he does not succeed in defeating Vader, he does succeed in conquering his own fear when he retricks Vader's offer to rule the galaxy alongside him. Finally, the final duel in Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. It's round two versus four, Luke versus Vader. However, this time, Luke has grown stronger in the Force and defeats Vader. But Luke doesn't kill him and stands up to Emperor Palpatine by casting away his lightsaber and also the temptation of the dark side. This rejection truly shows how at the worst of times, when his friends in the Rebel Alliance had fallen into a trap, he persevered and ended up helping his father redeem himself. Now, you may ask, why am I so passionate about these films? I've just enjoyed them for the vast universe that these films have created, and because these movies have been a big part of my life so far. I've enjoyed these movies about the dysfunctional Skywalker family and their adventure in the galaxy. Now, here's that inevitable life lesson I'm required to include. <laughs> In this time of uncertainty, remember the words of wise Master Yoda. Fear is the path to the dark side. Fear, le fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. To all of you, I hope you all stay safe and wish you the best of luck in the future. And of course, may the Force be with you, always.